Hello everybody, Nelson Virtual here with ExcelMail.com. Today I'll be speaking about how to monitor testosterone replacement therapy, what blood tests to run, what values to look at to prevent uh, any potential side effects, and also to maximize uh, benefits of testosterone replacement therapy. The first thing doctors actually di uh, measure before you get on testosterone uh, replacement is your total and free testosterone blood levels. They will also ask you a few questions to see if you have low testosterone or hypogonadal symptoms. They include low sex drive, erectile dysfunction, fatigue, low mood, and um, issues on cognitive capacity and functioning. So testosterone replacement therapy includes uh, anything to increase testosterone and blood levels, either injections or creams, gels, um, pellets, and there are several other options that I'll be speaking about in another video. So let's say you get, um, you go to a doc, go get your blood levels measured, and also do the diagnostic uh, questionnaire. And you're diagnosed with hypogonadism or having low testosterone. The doctor will prescribe either a testosterone injection, uh, cypionate or enanthate or even propionate or nebido or abid in different countries or put you on a cream, either a gel, 1%, 1.6, 2%, gel, or testum, or axirom, there are several of them, or a compounded cream, could be anywhere from 2% up to 20% um, of testosterone cream. There are also pellets, uh, like testopel, and there are compounded pellets that can go up to even 200 milligrams per pellet. Uh, they're vocal, like a, um, nasal-related uh, gels, like uh, uh, it's a drug approved in, uh, recently in the United States that is a gel that you apply in the nostrils uh, twice a day. So there's several options to increase testosterone replacement, and your doctor will help, help you determine which one is the best for you. So once you get on testosterone replacement, your doctor will have you come back either at week six or eight to run some run, uh, another blood test to see if uh, your dosage needs to be adjusted and or uh, you may require other medications to um, monitor or to modulate or change levels like estradiol, etc. The first one obviously is uh, testosterone total and free. You come back at week six or eight and your total testosterone is not over 500 nanograms per deciliter your doctor will probably choose to increase your dosage or your frequency of injections in, in the case of injections. Uh, free testosterone is usually around 2% of total or higher. If you have lower than 2%, your doctor will probably focus on any issues related to high uh, sex hormone binding globulin, which is a, a, a protein that binds to testosterone and um, does not free it up for, for action, for activity. Hematocrit is uh, the proportion of red blood cells in, in the blood. Testosterone tends to increase red blood cells, not in all patients. Uh, some men don't have that issue, but most men at least have one to three point increase in hematocrit. Excessive hematocrit can increase the viscosity of the blood and may cause cardiovascular uh, issues. So the number, the magic number to go for is a hematocrit of 53 or below. When you're getting close to 53, you have to basically donate blood or go for what we call th uh, therapeutic phlebotomy to bring down the red blood cell amount in the blood. And that's very important because uh, as the hematocrit goes up, your blood becomes more and more viscous and your cardiovascular system is compromised. So it's very important. It's also very important not to let it go too high because above 52, most blood center centers do not, um, do not accept you as a donor. So you will have to require a special prescription from your doctor for the blood centers to take your blood and dis uh, dispose it later. PSA, uh, prostatic specific antigen, the only contraindication of testosterone is for men who have a PSA of four or higher. Um, man, obviously physicians uh, get very concerned that a man with higher PSA may have prostatic cancer although it could be caused by infection of the prostate, prostatitis, 
that could be easily treatable with an antibiotic. So all high PSA does not mean you have cancer, obviously. It means that you either have an uh, infection, but um, the doctor will actually need to uh, follow you up and even refer you to a urologist. But if you do have a PSA of 4 or higher, you are not going to be allowed to use testosterone replacement unless your doctor can actually prove that it's an infection that would eventually be treated and your PSA will come down uh, after that. Estradiol, uh, that's probably the hottest topic right now online on excelmail.com. We have over four, uh, 14,000 men, uh, men that share experiences. A lot of them are obsessed with the estradiol value. <clears throat> estradiol is a very important hormone for men. We need it because estradiol actually is linked to bone health, to cognitive functioning, to cardiovascular health, even to sex drive and body composition, fat mass. Having very low estradiol under 20 is actually not good for you, 20 picograms per milliliter. And having very high, in the many studies that, several studies that different, have different opinions and, 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 and conclusions on what high estradiol means. 0.2% to 0.3% of testosterone gets converted into estradiol by the aromatase enzyme. So obviously, the body is producing estradiol, increases the amount of estradiol as, as your testosterone goes up. There's nothing wrong with that. Estradiol balances testosterone, enhances testosterone. So if you have a testosterone, let's say after you start testosterone replacement of 700 nanograms per deciliter, Obviously, your estradiol is going to be higher than when you started. Is that cause for concern? Maybe not. In my opinion, most men on testosterone replacement therapy do not need to take medications to lower estradiol. Medications like an astrosol or an imidex, for instance. I think it's an over, um, overblown subject. Um, yes, men with a history of gynecomastia or breast enlargement may have issues with, uh, with, with gynecomastia, again, if your estradiol is over 50 p uh, picograms per milliliter. But in most studies where men with gynecomastia were followed, a lot of those men had low testosterone while they had high estradiol. So in some instances, we think that the ratio of estradiol, the testosterone to estradiol is really the important factor to follow. But it's a very controversial um, topic where we have not a lot of agreement in the field. But yes, uh, most doctors are going for an estradiol level of 20 to 40 picograms per mil, milliliter. The testing method is very important. The old test uh, was based on uh, uh, immunoassay that tended to overestimate estradiol in men. It's actually proven by uh, one or two studies that uh, the real estradiol value um, it's better tested with a liquid chromatography mass spectrometry uh, testing assay. So make sure that if your doctor is going to check your estradiol, you're using the right uh, blood test. You can find the right blood test on discountedlabs.com. It's an LCMS uh, blood test. Another concern of high estradiol, so men think, feel that uh, water retention is an issue, although that has not been proven uh, 100%. Uh, by any studies. Blood pressure. Some men on testosterone replacement therapy tend to have an increase in blood pressure related to water retention. Obviously, as we retain water, our blood pressure goes up. There's some uh, central nervous system effects too sometimes that increase blood pressure and heart rate. So your doctor will keep an eye on that, most doctors do. And the ways to improve blood pressure is to lose weight or um, get on a blood pressure medication, exercise, um, and um, watch for uh, water retention, obviously. The estimated glomerular filtration rate, or EGFR, that's a way, you're, that's a way to measure your kidney function. Um, it's part of what we call uh, CMP blood test uh, panel, and you are we are um, aiming at over 60 of uh, EGFR of over 60. Anything below that is uh, indicative of a slowdown in the way your kidneys are 
filtering uh, toxins from your body. So, and testosterone does not really cause uh, decrease uh, in G EGFR, by the way. So that's not a huge concern, although a lot of men taking creatine, exercising heavily, or eating very high protein intake, uh, tend to probably have um, artificial increases in creatinine and obviously decreases in EGFR. EGFR, by the way, is a formula. You can Google EGFR, EGFR formula and see how that's calculated. Liver enzymes. Liver enzymes are followed. Um, however, I want to be clear, testosterone replacement therapy does not increase, has not been shown to increase liver enzymes. Only the old uh, oral forms of TRT uh, used to cause that problem. However, doctors obviously follow it up. Um, a very important uh, distinction to make is that men that are exercising heavily with weights at the gym may have an artificial increase in AST and ALT that has nothing to do with toxicity to the liver. Many doctors don't know that. There's actually data on, the, on that observation. DSH, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, it's also something uh, else that some, most doctors follow up, some actually do not. And, um, the thing about testosterone replacement therapy is that we have six big medical groups in the world that recommend different testing um, scheduling, and a few of them agree with each other. So it's, it's a, in a way, it's a very difficult uh, world of standard monitoring and frequency. But um, TSA of under 2.5 is what we are targeting for. Anything above 2.5 may indicate that you have a hypothyroidism or low thyroid. Doctors usually tend to go into a deeper uh, panel of thyroid, like measuring free T3 and free T4, along with antibodies to see if you have an autoimmune disease like Hashimoto's that may be uh, inducing hypo uh, hypothyroidism. Uh, free T3 as uh, part of the thyroid panel. Um, doctors look for uh, levels on the upper 30% uh, of the range. Ferritin and iron. When uh, your hematocrit is high, 52, 53 and above, and you go and donate blood or do a, uh, have a, a, an order of, for a therapeutic phlebotomy, you may, uh, some guys are donating too frequently, more than every three months. And that can deplete your iron stores and make you tired, fatigue. So it's very important that you keep that in mind. Donations should not be happening that frequently so you'll lose iron. Some doctors will test your iron and your ferritin, and if you have low levels, they will put you on an iron supplement. HDL, that's another one of the variables most affected by testosterone replacement, especially the higher doses. When I say higher doses, anybody using 200 milligrams of testosterone replacement per week, uh, CPNA or NFA, tend to have a lowering of the HDL, the good cholesterol. Uh, obviously, that has been shown to uh, cause cardiovascular issues, very concerning, so your doctor will always follow your lipids. The testosterone replacement is not really, has not really been shown to increase LDL. There's actually some studies that show that it improves triglyceride blood levels because testosterone tends to improve the way the body uh, metabolizes carbo carbohydrates. And there's very little we can do with HDL. Uh, niacin supplementation is one of the ways to increase it. Some people get flushing. Um, and also, obviously, decreasing the dose of testosterone. Prolactin. Not a hormone that is um, usually measured at baseline or even at follow-up, unless you're having uh, severe erectile dysfunction, even with good levels of testosterone once you're put on testosterone replacement. Men that have low testosterone at baseline, when I mean low testosterone, very low, under 150 nanograms per deciliter, uh, are, are probably the best candidates to get their prolactin checked. What happens with prolactin, which is a hormone that uh, women and men produce. Obviously, women um, that are lactating produce it at higher doses, at uh, higher concentrations in their bodies, because it helps lactation. It also has some other benefits. Uh, otherwise, men would not have it. 
some immune enhancing benefits, some cardiovascular uh, benefits that they are starting to show up in studies. So prolactin is not an evil hormone, but it can, at higher concentrations, um, cause erectile dysfunction. Um, and um, the reasons for high prolactin could be uh, um, a benign um, tumor, uh, adenoma, a pituitary adenoma that can be producing a lot of pituitary um, uh, output for prolactin and that could actually impair your, your testosterone replacement uh, therapy benefits. So it's a hormone that is hardly looked at. Uh, it's uh, looked at for men that have very low testosterone blood levels at baseline or those that um, do not respond well after eight weeks or 10 weeks of testosterone replacement therapy and or having high prolactin uh, symptoms like lactation, you know, I mean, that's actually a very strange symptom that actually do, does occur. So that's about it. I went through uh, a lot of these blood tests, what to do about them in this table. The table is available on excelmail.com. It's also available on discountinglabs.com, which is a website that I own along with uh, uh, physicians that provides very low uh, cost uh, blood testing in the United States, in most U uh, U.S. Uh, states, not all of them. So you can go to discountinglabs.com and check us out. Um, basically, you can buy uh, online uh, blood tests online with a credit card or PayPal. You don't need to see a doctor because we have an in-house physician that provides the prescription. We email you the um, order form, the lab uh, request form, that you take to the closest lab court location. We have a, a, a search um, a option on the site where you can input your zip code and you'll see uh, where your closest lab locations are. Once you go to the lab and get your blood drawn, we email you your results within five to seven business days, depending on the blood test. Uh, they're different assays, obviously. If you need help with um, knowing more about your blood test, edu educating yourself, we also have a blog uh, page on discannerlabs.com. For any questions, you can also post them on excelmail.com. Please register on the site. Uh, I'm giving away my book, Testosterone and Men's Guide, uh, for free download for those that register. So thank you very much for watching this video. We have a few more. Uh, check us out on the YouTube channel, Excel Mail, or on excelmail.com. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.